What's up guys, I'm DK Wrestler and in today's video we're going to be discussing about the redeemable pops for the upcoming Series 2 of the Hanna-Barbera Funko NFT. So let's get right to it. So last Friday, Funko and Drop confirmed the next set of NFTs which is of a Series 2 Hanna-Barbera. And Hanna-Barbera is now the fourth licensor that Funko has done NFTs for to have a Series 2 with the three previous sets that's being DC Comics, Funko Halloween, and Nickelodeon last month. And then a couple days ago, Drop confirmed the redeemable pops for this upcoming set, which I think there are some pretty cool pops. So let's get right into talking about the Series 2 set, comparing them to Series 1, and then stating my opinion on whether I think Series 1 or Series 2 was better for the Hanna-Barbera Funko NFT redeemable pops. So here we go, guys. Here is the digital Funko website where it shows the pictures of the different redeemable pops. And this, of course, is for Series 2 that is coming up soon for Hanna-Barbera. So the first pop we're looking at, of course, is the 999-piece Grail, which is a 0.27% chance of obtaining which of course is huckleberry hound i'm not surprised of course that there is a huckleberry hound funko ceo brian mariotti is a huge fan of Huckleberry Hound, so it makes sense that Huckleberry Hound would be a part of the set. And I do enjoy the way that this pop looks where you got the hat on and he's holding what I believe would be a banjo, not only because of the minimal amount of strings that are on the instrument, but of course the body like base of the instrument being more of a circle instead of like a more overly shaped like you would normally see with guitars. So I assume that it's a banjo. I think it's pretty decent and it's a cool version of huckleberry hound into which it definitely makes sense that it is the grail because some people might get it but i don't think everyone is entirely going to be getting this pop and then moving on to the legendary so the first one we have here is birdman which i believe the show that this is a part of is called birdman and the galaxy trio i could be wrong i actually haven't seen this before but i do like the way that this pop looks and like the legendaries that will be on here that we talk about they will all be limited to 2000 pieces with a 1.64% chance of obtaining and I do like the way that this looks I love the whole outfit and you have kind of like that ball of energy in the one hand it's in a flying stance and I really like the detail involving the wings where it's all blue but you do see the detail of the feathers within it and I'm kind of curious to know what the actual NFT card looks like which it looks pretty cool it's shooting down a ship with his energy lasers or whatever it is that it's shooting out but that's pretty cool it just made a shield right there it would have been cool to actually make like that shield that you've seen in that video uh except in the pop form but it's still cool i like the pose and i feel like if i were to actually pull a redeemable for this drop since we will be doing a video next week of opening up the packs for this that I feel like the one I want the most out of all of them is the bird band because it just looks so unique. And then what I believe is from the same licensor is Mighty Mitor, which same limited piece count, same percent chance of obtaining because it is a legendary and this isn't too bad. It's a little bit more simplistic compared to the bird man. It's not in a flying pose. There's nothing really going on with uh, this character's hands besides holding that like kind of like Billy Bat mallet type deal that the character is holding which is pretty cool and then the last redeemable for the legendaries we have here is Mr. Jinx with Dixie and Pixie from Huckleberry Hound. Now we have seen Dixie and Pixie Pops before as they were a two-pack from New York Comic Con a few years back. I can't remember what year it was. It might have been 2020 if memory serves me correctly. But now we have them more in a smaller form where you have a character with Mr. Jinx, thus making kind of like a pop and buddies with a little S at the end uh, instead of just a pop and buddy. So I like that idea. I like the facial expression involved with the Mr. Jinx character. And I do feel that a lot of people would be into getting this pop. I haven't really seen a lot of people's comments of what they think that their favorite redeemable is for this upcoming drop, but I do like the way that this pop looks. And I'd be really happy if I were to pull this redeemable, at least for the card, when opening up these packs come next week so i think that's pretty cool and then the last pop we have here there's only five instead of what we usually see with a lot of the sets being six is the royalty 
being Freddy Funko as Letterman, which will be limited to 2,300 pieces when, of course, you get the common, uncommon, rare, and epic cards. Any of the cards that aren't the legendary or grails that guarantee you a redeemable pop, which I think this is all right. It seems like kind of like a little bit more of a simplistic human character, but with a cool like varsity jacket type deal where it has HB for Hanna-Barbera on the right side of the jacket. And it looks like it's holding a Huckleberry Hound doll. So technically, does this classify as more of a Huckleberry Hound pop or just it's more around the fandom of Hanna-Barbera and it can be pretty much related to anything. But this one's all right. Not entirely my favorite Freddy Funko redeemable that they have made for the NFTs, but it's still a pretty decent one. And now giving you guys more of a shorter overview of the series one set that released in July, the grail being 999 pieces with a 0.33% chance uh, more obtainable than the upcoming drops grail pop is another version of Huckleberry Hound. This time it is in a space outfit or at the time it is in a space outfit and he's hold and he has the uh, space helmet on. This one's a little bit meh. I mean, it's in a little bit of a simplistic pose where the one arm is behind the back and then the other one is more of a thumbs up. I mean, I felt like they could have done better, but once again, it made sense that Huckleberry Hound would be a part of the set because of Funko CEO Brian Mariotti being a huge fan of Huckleberry Hound. And then moving on to the legendary redeemables for this set, all three of them actually came from the Jetsons, which the first one we're looking at is Elroy, which is limited to 1,635 pieces with a 1.6 four percent chance of obtaining and this one is not too bad it has a better posing than the original one but i feel like i would rather want the original one more than this one the george jetson same piece count same uh percent chance of obtaining from the Jetsons. This one is all right. I mean, did we really need another George Jetson from the original one? I don't really think so. And then the Astro kind of ticks me off because it is very, very similar to the original Astro Pop where it's in that same pose. I believe the arms or the front legs, I should say, are a bit different from that, but I believe it is the exact same head sculpt as the original Astro Pop when the initial set of Jetsons Funko Pops were made. So this was a little bit meh. I mean, maybe they could have pulled this off as more of the Grail Pop for this set and then chose a different pop from a different maybe Hanna-Barbera licensor to fill in that last slot for the Legendary and then just take out that Huckleberry Hound overall. But I do feel the highlight for this set was indeed this royalty, Freddy Funko as Space Ghost with Blip, which was limited to 3,000 pieces when, of course, you get all of the different cards that aren't the redeemable cards. This is really awesome. And this, I believe, was the first ever redeemable NFT pop that was pretty much a pop and buddy. This one's pretty cool, though, because especially it is dabbling to a different Hanna-Barbera licensor instead of picking one of the two ones that are shown off here. So now I have to make a choice. Do I think Series 1 or Series 2 of the Hanna-Barbera NFTs are better? I'm actually gonna go with series two, the one that's coming up this upcoming week. And I think the biggest thing that I like about this set compared to the series one set is that there's more variety as terms to licensors. I mean, on a technicality, you do have like three Huckleberry Hound ones when you have the Grail one right here, and then you have the Mr. Jinx with Dixie and Pixie. And then I guess you can technically call this Freddy Funko one as a Huckleberry Hound one, but not at the same time though, but it also dabbles into newer licensors like the Birdman and the Galaxy Trio, which had never been made into pops previously. At least that's what I'm pretty sure they have not made pops of that previously. And I feel like these would be pops that if they have not made pops previously, that I think would do better as NFT pops than normal like common pops or possibly regular Funko Shop exclusive pops later on down the line because even for me i had never heard about birdman until the announcement of this nft drop unless of course you are a huge fan of hanna barbera mr jinx with dixie and pixie for huckleberry hound that isn't of course a huckleberry hound for the huckleberry hound lineup say that 10 times fast whereas with series one is that for sure there are three jetsons pops with elroy jetson george jetson and astro where i believe that you're better off just 
just getting the common pops that were previously done because I do like the outfits more for Elroy, George, and Astro. And especially like I mentioned with Astro and how this NFT one is so similar to the previous Astro pop. Like why pay so much money to get the packs to get this Astro when you can easily find the original one on the secondary market for a cheaper price. But the thing that I will give series one that has the advantage over series two is the royalty pop of Freddy Funko as Space Ghost with Blip because this one is a much better royalty pop compared to the Series 2 Freddy Funko where I felt it was a little bit plain and simplistic. But as terms to an overall set, I do think that Series 2 was better than Series 1 when it comes to the Hanna-Barbera Funko NFTs. Anyways, guys, that's going to be the end of today's video. And if you enjoyed this type of video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if you're planning on going for the Series 2 of Hanna-Barbera NFTs this upcoming Tuesday, and I'll see you guys in the next video. One, two, three, I'm out of here.